So um, we're going to continue going through the revelation of Jesus Christ. Um, it is, right now, it's my favorite topic. I've been really enjoying it. This is something that I've been going through and studying for almost a year now in depth. I mean, obviously we have the new man and it touches everything really good, but I decided for myself to go into real, uh, more depth, just go through scripture to scripture. And everything that relates to Jesus, I'm relating to myself. So everything that the Word of God says about Jesus, it also says about us, right? And so scripturally, so a lot sometimes when we tell people that, they're like, well, where, is it, where does it say that in the Bible? And so people want scripture. And so um, we have scripture for all of these things. It's very important that you know all of these scriptures. So when somebody asks you, because a lot of times when you tell people that you can be just like Christ, they think that you're crazy and they think that you're full of yourself and they think that you're, um, that you're in pride or just that you're, you're off. Because people, most Christians, don't see themselves as Christ and don't even believe that they can be anything like Him. Even though they read it in the Bible, they hear it all the time, but it's something that's just... When you really start talking to people, people are really uh, like it's, it, there's a big dis difference or distance between the what people hear and what they think they believe and what they actually believe. And so this is the key, I believe, for the body of Christ to really get that revelation and understanding of who we are in Christ, who Christ is in us, and what does it really mean. And so the only way to do it is if you start looking through scriptures and start renewing your mind into that truth. And you start seeing yourself one with Jesus. Like we cannot separate ourselves from Jesus, right? So one of the scriptures that we talked about is and that's the core scripture of the new man. It's in Colossians 1, 27 through 28, that Christ is in us, the hope of glory, right? So that is the truth that we have to understand. So it was so important for God to do this to where that the Bible says that if the devil would have known that what Jesus was going to do by him killing Jesus, what was going to do to us and what power and authority that would give to us, he would have not even crucified Jesus. That's how much the devil is afraid of this. That's how much the devil is afraid of having all of us have Jesus in us. And so we have to start seeing as, as reality, like that Jesus Christ is in us, like we're one with him. And so that's something that when you hear it for the first time, it like, it doesn't sink in really well. In your mind, you're like, okay, I can't agree with it. It's in the Bible, I can't agree with it. But when you really start checking yourself, um, when we talk to people, people don't really believe it. When it comes down to it, people don't really believe the scripture. But it is written in here, and so therefore, if we, we establish that the Word of God is the ultimate truth, and so we have a lot of teachings on Monday nights that we go through right now, where we just keep going over that the written Word is the only thing that is the truth. It is settled, it is finished, so what's in here is the truth. So if we don't believe what's written here is the truth, then we for sure cannot go to the next step to start believing all these other things that the world thinks are crazy. Because when you talk to an unbeliever and you tell them like, hey, Jesus lives in me, they think you're crazy. Like they, they don't understand how that's possible because they don't understand the spiritual realm. So all they can see is physical realm and they have no idea that you can have Jesus living in you. And so unfortunately, most believers don't believe that either. Or if they do believe it, they just don't, um, don't, don't walk it out. And so we have to understand that Christ is in us and he's the hope of glory and he abides in us. And so the other scripture that we talked about is in 1 John 4, 17. And it says, as he is, so are we in this world. That's a crucial scripture to also to understand and to agree with and to believe it. And this is not something that you're going to hear at one time and immediately like you're gonna start walking it out. This is something that you have to renew your mind to it. So the way to do that is if you start speaking that scripture over yourself throughout the, throughout the week. Every time you think about it, you say, 
As he is, so I am in this world. As he is, so I am in this world. And throughout the week, you got to walk around and say that. And you keep saying that, 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 and then it starts becoming more of your reality. If you just hear it one time on Sunday, and we say the scripture very often and on many Sundays, um, Mitri, I think there's somebody knocking on the wrong door. Oh. So if we just hear the scripture once a week and don't do anything else with it, it's not going to, it's not going to affect our life. Unless it becomes something that becomes our daily, part of our daily life, we cannot renew our mind to it just by hearing it every once in a while. This has to become something that we continuously, we decide, we acknowledge, and we proclaim and we speak it over and over and over uh, every time we remember and start saying it out loud. As he is, so I am in this world. So let's repeat after me. As he is, Amen. Awesome. You guys got that memorized. And that's something that's supposed to be coming out of your mouth every chance you get. There are certain things that we just have to get grounded. So there are things that we talk about. Righteousness, when we drink uh, something we remember when we do communion, when we eat something we remember we have divine health. And same thing with this. As we're walking around in our daily life, we're supposed to remember that as he is, so I am in this world. You have to personalize it. It's not like as he is, so is like the whole body of Christ or somebody else. It has to become personal. It has to become your revelation that just like Jesus is, so I am literally in this world. And as we're going to be going through all these scriptures, and today we're going to continue talking about Jesus is the light. Every scripture that talks about Jesus is the light will also refer to us, that we are the light. Everything that God said about Jesus, because Jesus is in us, now that apply, the same principles apply to us. And so we have to go scripture by scripture and just start making that our reality. Start making that the truth that we stand on, the truth that we believe. And as we keep doing that, that's going to start becoming more and more part of us. And so our goal is to concentrate on Jesus. So a lot of people concentrate on problems, concentrate on issues, situations, uh, circumstances, and that's what the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to focus on any, everything else except Jesus. Just like the sister testified, as soon as she brought Jesus into the situation over this lady, darkness fled, peace came over. Why? Because she, when she brought Jesus to that situation. And so anytime we bring Jesus to any situation, there is always going to be a change. There is always going to be an immediate transformation. Why? Because Jesus is bigger, stronger, better than anything that this world has and anything that the devil has. But the problem is that the church doesn't believe that. And so when we talk to somebody and they say like, oh, we have this problem and this problem, this problem. And um, all we do is we just send them our condolences. Like, oh, we're so sorry that this is happening to you. That is not what God intended us to do. Like when, when I see people, like when some, something happens to somebody and they post it on, on, on Facebook or whatever, and everybody just says like, yeah, we, yeah, sorry that this happened to you, but nobody's willing to stand up and do something about it. Nobody's willing to stand up and say, no, this is not supposed to happen. In Jesus name, this situation will change. Um, this storm will stop. Uh, Dorian, you will not go, you will go back out in the sea and you will completely stop and not touch earth, not touch uh, people. We have that ability. And so we have to decide that if we are like Jesus, we can do all the things that Jesus did. And that's something that we, if we don't practice every day, we're not going to be able to effect, be effective in it in, when a situation comes. When a situation comes up, and this is not something that we believe or we walk out or we even think about, at that point it's too late. The devil's going to win. So we have to be always on the proactive. We have to be ready. We have to be proclaiming this, speaking this, seeing this as our truth. And as we see it as our truth, then it can actually start working for us. And always be proactive. When you experience pain in your body, like, oh, no, nope, I have divine health. Devil, you're a liar, get lost. And everything, it has to stop, the symptoms have to stop, they have to leave you, and sickness cannot touch you. If you proactively, proactively practice this in your daily life, it will work for you. Why? Because it's in the Word, and we believe that the Word of God is truth, 
And if Jesus did it, and he's in us, and as he is, so are we in this world, that means that everything he did, we have the ability to do it. There is nothing, the only thing that we're, that he does not want us to do, which the devil actually fools some people into doing, is to carry and go to the cross. Like there are some people that actually believe that because Jesus went to the cross, they're supposed to do the same thing. Like we minister to some people like that. That is one thing that we are not supposed to do. Things that he did for us, he was the only one that's supposed to do that. Like go to the cross, uh, the all the exchange things that he did for us. That he did and we're not supposed to do, he did that for us so we can actually walk out in that freedom. But everything else, as he walked this earth, we can do the same thing. Everything that the apostles did when they walked this earth, when we read the book of Acts, we see all the things, all the miracles, everything that they did, you know, the snake tried to bite Apostle Paul, he just shook it off and then touched him. There's a lot of crazy stories in there, like when you look at it, like, wow, this is, this is a miracle. But that's supposed to be our reality. That is supposed to be how we walk out. It is not supposed to be something that only worked for them and not for us. And I know a lot of people believe that those things have passed away. Why people believe that? Because it's easy. Then you don't, then you don't have to take on the responsibility. You try it and it doesn't work and you say like, well, it must have been just for them. And then like, I don't have to deal with it. But no, the Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. And Jesus is still the same as he was 2,000 years ago. So therefore, everything's still the same. Healing's still there, deliverance still there. All of that stuff is still there because Jesus didn't change. And so we cannot change the word of God because we don't want to take the responsibility. Amen? Okay, so I'm gonna go to... So then uh, we covered in John chapter one, verses one through four, we talked about where the Word of God talks about that Jesus is light and He is life. And so what that means is that we are also light and we are also life. And we are also glory and we're also the resurrection power because Jesus is all of those things. We went through these scriptures. We're not gonna get through into them again today, but we have to remember that Jesus was light life, glory, resurrection power, the same thing applies to us. So repeat after me. I am life. I am life. I am light. I am light. I am glory. I am glory. I am resurrection power. I am resurrection power. Because Jesus was. Because Jesus was. Jesus is. Jesus is. Jesus is in me. Jesus is in me. And I can do all things. And I can do all things. Through him. Through him. And because he's in me, because he's in me, I can be just like him. I can be just like him. As he is, as he is, so I am in this world. So I am in this world. I stand on this truth. I stand on this truth. I will renew my mind to this truth. I will renew my mind to this truth. And I will walk this out in my life. And I will walk this out in my life. Any darkness, Any darkness that comes up to me, comes up to me has, to flee. has to flee. Any darkness that I come up to has to flee because I am light. Because I am light. Amen. Amen. And so that's something that we have to, like throughout, throughout the week, just walk around and say, I'm light, I'm life, I'm glory, I'm resurrection power. And just, even though you don't understand what it means, but just start saying those things. And as you start to say those things, you're going to start thinking more and more of like what it actually means. And these are some of the scriptures that we're going to be going through. And so they're all intertidal. They're all Jesus. And so light, life, glory, resurrection, power. It all goes back to the same thing. It's Jesus. And so everything that we're studying is the revelation of Jesus. And so since he is light, I had no idea that there are so many scriptures that talk about him as being the light. And there's like, we're going to cover... Um, a lot of really, really cool scriptures, and so I'm excited to go through all that. So we're going to go first to John 1, 5. We're going to continue on. And it says, And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. So the light that it talks about is Jesus. So it says that Jesus shined and the darkness could not comprehend it. 
And so we also have to understand what is darkness. Anything that's of the devil, or anything that is not of God, or any situation where God is absent from, is darkness. Which pretty much is majority of the stuff on the earth, anything of the devil. That is darkness. Everything that brings you worry, anxiety, fear, torment, all of that is darkness. All the works of the devil are darkness. And so to simplify it, it says that light, when light came, the darkness could not comprehend it. And so that's what it said about Jesus. And so now the same thing principle applies to us. If we are light, darkness cannot comprehend it. Darkness cannot stand in our way. We have to start seeing ourselves as this light. Um, I'm an electrician, so sometimes I walk around, you know, and I, I see a light, like, you know, I imagine a light sticking in my head, and so everywhere I go, I just start imagining that. And so, it, it sounds funny and silly, but that's how, just, that's how I do my mind. That's something that I do to trigger my mind to remember how that works. And so, whatever it is in your daily practical applications that you do, that you can apply the principle that you see yourself as light, you have to start doing that. So your homework this week is to figure out how you're going to remember at least three to five to seven times a day that you are light. And again, it's not because you're special. We're not glorifying us, we're not glorifying us. All, everything goes back to Jesus. And as we see these scriptures, if you start realizing that it's, it's not because of you, it's not because of me, Everything's because of Jesus. And because Jesus said those things, he deserves it that we believe it and agree with it and walk it out. Like he already paid the price. He paid the price. So we walk around as candles, lights, uh, floodlights, whatever you want to see yourself as. Um, that's what Jesus paid the price for is that as you walk around this earth, when you come across any darkness, it cannot comprehend you. I know it sounds something that we already heard before, but most people never give it a thought of what it actually means. And how do we know that is because when we talk to people, anytime any kind of darkness comes up, I mean, it could be darkness that somewhere like, for example, I'm saying right here and I can see like under the bush, it's dark. And I'm not talking about there's any demonic power. I'm just talking about actual physical light or darkness. It's dark. So people see darkness and immediately like, it takes them into fear, it takes them into anxiety, it takes them into worry. And it's not even like it doesn't even have anything to do with it. There's all this light, you're saying in the light, but there is some darkness somewhere. And how do you relate that in the physical realm is people hear news of something. People turn on TV and hear like, you know, this is going to happen. Or somebody just says something and the world starts panicking. Some fool gets on TV and says, economy is going to go bad. And everybody starts selling and panicking like, oh, things are falling apart. I'm going to lose my job. What's going to happen? And the guy just probably, you know, the, I don't know how he gets on TV to say those things. He's not even qualified to do that. We don't know if that person's qualified or not. But we take his word for it because he said it. Versus taking the word of God that says that God is your provider. And that is the light. The light is that God is in you and he will provide all things for you. So, but if you see yourself as light, then the darkness will not affect you. Any news of darkness, any news of anything, anywhere, far away, close, will not affect you because you will see yourself as light. And that's the key is to renew yourself and to continue to put that, put that Christ on you that you are light. And what that also means is not only is it supposed to affect you, it's supposed to affect people around you because now you have this abundant life, which is abundant light, abundant glory, abundant resurrection power in you, flowing out of you. And so now you can affect other people simply by just either telling somebody when somebody says like, well, this is, this is going to happen to me. And you say, no, we're going to pray about it and it's not going to happen. How can we do that? Because the Bible says, whatever you bind on earth, it will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, it will be loosened in heaven. But if we don't see ourselves as that light, we won't have the boldness to be able to do that, to be able to speak that out. And so we continue to renew our mind 
to this truth that light and in that, that light can darkness cannot comprehend. And so this is like one of the core principles to understand that there is no darkness that can affect you or put you out. Amen? Amen. So repeat after me. No darkness, no darkness, no darkness can put me out. No darkness can affect the light that is in me. Can affect me as the light to the world. Amen. Okay, so continuing on, in verse 6 it says, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe he was not that light but was sent to bear witness of that light. That it was true that light which gives light to every man coming, in, coming into the world. And so I want to read the last verse again. That was true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. So from the very beginning, we can see that Jesus' light came into this world and he gave light. That means Jesus, the one that gives out that light, that life to every person that believes in him. So if you're a believer you and you believe it, you are also that light because Jesus came not only to be the light, but to give that light to every believer. And so when somebody says like, oh, I can't do that, or I can't, you know, like this only works for special people, or it works for uh, anointed people, that is not true. If you see yourself as light, and everything else is darkness, and you believe that Jesus came to give you that he is the light, and he can give you that light, that eliminates all those theories. It just, it makes it so simple. Like as I was going through the scriptures, I start seeing how, how, how simple it really is. Like theology and theologians make it so complicated, but it's not really that complicated. Like if you uh, just simplify it, and our goal is just to take it to the very simplest form. I don't believe that Jesus wanted Christianity to become this complicated um, doctrine to where you have to have an eight-year degree to understand and know Greek and Hebrew and 50 other languages to understand that you are light. Amen? Amen. Everybody understands in English what light is, right? Yes. And everybody understands that you are light. That's good. Amen. You now understand more than people with the eight-year degrees. <laughs> That's how simple it is. Jesus purposely talked about that children have to be able to understand it. Like, God's goal is not to make this to where it's not achievable. God's goal is not to make it so complicated that only few elites will get it. That is not His plan. His plan is that everyone that believes that Jesus is light can also be light. And it's that simple. And so it's, it's really good news. I know it's very basic, simple, simple stuff that we're talking about but if you get that revelation and you start walking it out everything will change i guarantee you everything will change why because circumstances and everything that's of the darkness will no longer be able to affect you when we minister to people when we talk to people people spend so much time so much effort so much energy so much money to feel peace to experience a little bit of peace to experience a little bit of joy. It is very expensive to do it the world way. First, the devil gets you into that problem, and then he makes you pay your life to get out of it, and it's also a lie because you can't. And Jesus brought it for free and made it so simple, so achievable for every person. We just have to believe. Not believe that there's a problem and that there's a bigger problem, we can do nothing about it, or that we need some special person to help us with that, but believe that because we are light and because light is in us, the darkness has to flee. Imagine living a life, like if we could only see it in our physical eyes, um, 
I've seen it on the physical level because being an electrician, so if we worked in some buildings where it was, you know, it was dark or in the evenings, I'd go around room to room and turn on the light. Literally, like I'm going in flipping lights. I'm flipping switches and then I'm flipping switches, lights turn on. And instantly when I come in, flip the switch, darkness flees. Every time, like guaranteed. Every single time. And if we could get the revelation as we're walking, literally, because we are that light, every place we go, every room we walk into, no matter where we're at, darkness has to flee. That is the revelation that we, that we need to get. That is the revelation that um, if the body of Christ gets a hold of, everything changes. Because then the darkness will never be bigger. If you don't see light is bigger, not only that, if you don't see that light in you bigger than the darkness, then the darkness wins every time. And so you have to grow into that understanding that the light of Jesus Christ that's in you is bigger. And the scripture says the one that is in us is bigger than the one that's in this world. Every time. It's not sometimes. It's not when we feel like it, we don't feel like it. It's like that every single time. Every single time, our light is bigger than darkness. Amen. You guys don't sound very excited. Yes. Amen. I know I'm repeating the same thing over and over, but because it's very, very important. It is crucial for us to understand and to renew our mind to it. Because everything changes then. As we start walking this out, everything starts changing. Our goal is to work ourselves out of a job. Our goal is to where you understand these principles and you do not need help anymore. That you are now going to become a light to somebody else and you're going to be shining and setting somebody else's free. That is how God intended it. Somebody that has light brings light to somebody who's in darkness. You light up that area and then people in that area take that light and go to the next dark place and spread it across the world, spread it across every neighborhood, spread it across every city. And that's what we're doing on Saturday mornings is we're going around as that light coming to every house around here. We want to light up because they say like when we got in here, um, the owner of this place told us, you know, like there are so many there are so many murders that happen every year, like there's so much this and so much this and you have to be careful of this. And immediately, in myself, I disagreed with him. I know that that was the fact before, but now we moved in here. There is light here now. So that means all darkness, all works of the darkness have to stop. That can no longer be happening here. And we start walking that out and practically start applying that scripture in our life. So now let's go to John 17, 21 through 23. So John 17, verse 21 through 23. And these are words of Jesus, and he said, and that was his prayer to the Father, and he says, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me, and the glory, again, that word glory, which is light, life, resurrection power, it's all the same stuff, which you gave me, I have given them. And so we see here that Jesus is talking to the Father and he said, whatever you have given me, I have given them. And who is them? Us. That's us. So everything that the Father has given to Jesus, he has given us. Is there anything that he held back? No. Then how come we don't believe it? How come we think that it's he gave us a little bit of this or a little bit of that? 
It's because we just did not get this revelation yet. And so we need, we're going to continue talking about it and talking about it till the light turns on in every head and we're all going to like, I get it. That's, that's how it works. That's how mind renewal works. You read it and it makes sense a little bit. You read it again, it makes sense a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And then you start seeing it work in yourself. I'm seeing, like, when I used to concentrate um, all my attention on my problems, I just saw that my problems kept getting bigger. When I started learning this and realized that I need to stop concentrating on my problems, but start concentrating on Jesus, I started noticing that those problems would just start falling off. And I start noticing that there is like even a lot of changes happen in my character, how um, how I think, to where it's almost like becomes automatically. Just as an example, yesterday we went and looked at uh, a building, and after that we stopped by a burger bill, and I went to use the restroom, and then I looked down, and, and it was a mess on the floor. And so I know in the past, I would just kind of like, walk around it and get out of there as quick as possible. And in my head, I'm like, well, whoever the cleaner person is, have fun. But what I found myself doing, and not even realizing it, I look down, I'm like, that's not good. And immediately my hands, my body went and grabbed paper towels and I cleaned it up on the floor. And then like, I'm saying, I'm like, what did I just do? That is something that I would have never done before. But because I keep concentrating on this light and I keep concentrating on Jesus, something inside of me is happening to where I can't even explain it. Like I will look at myself, I will look at my behavior and I'm like puzzled, like how, like I would have never done that. Like I hate cleaning bathrooms. <laughs> For sure I would hate to clean bathrooms after somebody else. That's just the way it was. Now, don't invite me to clean your bathroom. <laughs> but I just noticed something just drew my body to do that. And as I was walking out, I was like, wow. Like, how is this, like, how is this possible? And I started realizing, so if I did the other way around, so if I came in there and I said, okay, I gotta work, like next bathroom I see, I'm gonna work on myself and like, I'm gonna try to clean up bathrooms. <laughs> I did that before, I, that didn't work. So instead, I just concentrate on Jesus, concentrate on Him, start just repeating all these scriptures, just walking around literally, like not even understanding sometimes what it means. Like for the last few weeks, I've been just walking around and says and, and saying, I'm light, I'm life, I'm glory, I'm resurrected power, and I just walk around and almost like sing sometimes. In the shower, I'll be just, just speaking that out and hope that, you know, Simon doesn't see me and come join me <laughs> and sing. But... You just keep saying that, and the Word of God just does something in us. And it's unex like it's hard to explain. And we don't need to figure out how it works. It doesn't matter. It says that the Word of God will go into, into our division of our spirit and soul and do something. It's miraculous. It's, it's God's life. It's His power. It's His Word. It never leaves void. If we keep putting it in ourselves, something's going to happen. Does it mean that we're going to be perfect? No, not right. You know, not right away. But the more we do it, it's, we're going to continue change and change and change. I still find myself doing things, you know, or thinking things, or just you know that that are not right. I'm nowhere near perfect, but I start noticing that more and more that as I'm going through this word more, that those things just start falling off, and I'll just notice a month go by, two months go by, like oh, I didn't feel. Like that anymore. I didn't get angry over that situation. And just things just start happening. And that's how strong this word is. That's how strong the relation of Jesus Christ is. Jesus Christ is. It's nothing complicated. You just have to daily decide to just speak this truth, to just speak these scriptures over your life. Whether or not you understand it or not, whether or not it makes sense to you or not, just start speaking it. And the Holy Spirit is that good. He will reveal to us. It says that He will lead us and guide us into all truth. If we just start doing our part, He will do His part. And we don't even have to figure out how He does it. We just have to be obedient to this Word and do that part. And He will start changing things. And the glory which He gave me, 
I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. I in them, and you and me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know them. You have sent me, and I have loved them as you have loved me. I mean, these are very, very powerful words that Jesus is saying. Like he is, what he's doing here is he, he is tangling ours all together. Like it's almost like this, like just it's all tangled up. We're in the Father, Father's in us. Jesus is in the Father, Jesus, the Father is in Jesus. We're in Jesus, Jesus is in us. And it's all like, it's all one. Like if you read it, it's like, like whoa, whoa, like how do you even follow this? But it doesn't matter. All that matters is that Jesus is in us. We're in him. He's in the Father. We're in the Father. Father's in us. Jesus is in us. Any one of those work. You can mix it any way you want. Jesus is saying that if we are his children, we are one with him. And so if we're that knitted together, then nothing can separate us. So like we cannot see ourselves separate from Jesus. And this is a revelation also that we need to continue to grow, to grow into, to understand, is that we're just knitted together with Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, like we're one. We're one together and we're doing everything together, like we're never alone. If you ever feel like you're alone, remember this. See this like spider web, like see how the, like it's tangled up, like you're, you're Spider web is a bad example, like um, just like a root, you know, everything's like tangled up, like it's all tied together. And it's tied together so hard to where the enemy cannot separate it, people cannot separate it, you cannot separate that. Why? Because Jesus put it all together. And so we are one with him. And that's so important to understand that we're never alone because what the enemy tries to do practically in our daily life, he tries to get us to separate. He tries to get us in a place where we feel like we're alone. He wants us to feel like the whole world has turned on us. And maybe people will turn on you. He doesn't say, you know, I and you and the father and your mom or your dad or your brother and sister. He doesn't bring that in. He just talks about him and the Father. Jesus can guarantee what he does. He cannot guarantee what other people do. So you don't rely on other people. You rely on the truth is that where he was, he's always with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. You're always together. You're always one. And so when the enemy starts telling you something, telling you a lie, that you're all abandoned, you're all alone, God has left you. You just say, no devil, you're a liar. I'm in the Father, Father is in me, and get, get him confused. The devil is stupid. You start telling him the scripture, I'm in the Father, Father is in me, Jesus is in the Father, Jesus is in me, and you just start saying that over and over and over, the devil's like, uh, okay, I'm out of here. I guarantee you. You start bringing Jesus into the picture, and the devil starts figuring out that you believe that you're one with Jesus as Jesus is in you. I guarantee you that the devil knows Jesus really well and he's scared of him because Jesus whooped his butt. Devil doesn't want to fight Jesus and he doesn't want to deal with Christians that believe that they're one with Jesus, that believe what Jesus said about them, that they believe that. And so the more that we speak that out loud, he can hear really clear. But when we start doing that in the beginning, the devil tests us. He sees like, do you really believe that? Because he knows that most Christians don't. He knows that he can apply a little bit of pressure in the beginning and people will quit because they don't believe that. And so we have to be proactively just learning and growing into this and this revelation of who Jesus is in us. Okay, so now let's go to John 20, 21. John chapter 20, verse 21. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you, as the Father has sent me, I also send 
you. So who is Jesus talking to? Us. Us. Did he leave anybody out in this room? Is anybody left out in this room? No. no. So this scripture applies to every single one of us. And he says, peace to you. So what does that mean? In the presence of peace, can there be any fear? Can there be any anxiety? Can there be any worry? No. Just like in the presence of light, there cannot be any presence of darkness. Or you have a horrible light bulb you need to replace and your light bulb burned out. That's a different story. But if we understand this, like Jesus told every believer, he said, peace to you. So practically, when you show up to work or anywhere you show up and somebody tells you some bad news and immediately fear comes up and like, I'm going to lose my job or I'm going to fail my class, what are you supposed to do practically? You immediately say, no. Jesus said, peace to me. Jesus is peace. Peace abides in me. And I choose that that peace that's everlasting. See, that's another good news. Anything that Jesus gives us is permanent. He doesn't work like the devil does. The devil gives you satisfaction and peace and pleasure. It's all very temporary. And you pay a heavy price. Jesus gives, gives everything to us for free. And it's everlasting. It is such a good deal. It is uncomparable to what the devil offers. But most people will take what the devil offers and they will not even look to God to receive what he offers. Even though his deal is way better. And I believe the reason for that is, is because the church has not promoted God's deal for what it is. Because I believe that if, if the church would have promoted what God is offering to this world, a lot more people would be into this. But as church, we're not doing our job. And so Jesus said, peace to you. So repeat after me. Peace. Jesus said, Jesus said peace, to me. peace to me. All the time. All the time. I am in peace. I am in peace. All the time. All the time. I choose. I, I, decide, I decide. I acknowledge, I acknowledge that, my normal state of being that my normal state of being is peace, is peace and, nothing else. and nothing else. And when something else tries to replace it, I will say no. I will say no. And I will remind it, I will remind it that peace, the peace of Jesus, of Jesus is, in me. is in me. Because Jesus said, Peace to me. Peace to me. Amen? Amen. See, if you start practicing this every day, really quick, you're not going to have any fear, worry, and anxiety. Just like that, this one scripture will eliminate all of that. You'll get off all your antidepressants, all your medication, all the garbage that the world has been trying to give you for so long, and it's not working. If you just agree with one verse that says, Peace to me. It is so awesome. Amen? Amen. God's peace is the best thing there is. There is nothing else compatible. There is nothing that's even close. Everything that this world offers is horrible. Jesus offers us his peace. And if you want to figure out how his peace works, look in the scriptures. He gets in the boat. His 12 disciples are rowing and the winds came up and Jesus is sleeping. He doesn't even wake up. I can imagine apostles are screaming, yelling like we're going to die, you know, and that doesn't even bother him. They had to come, I don't know, shake him, tickle, I don't know what they had to do to wake him up. It doesn't say it in here. But if he slept through the storm, I 
pretty sure it took some effort to wake him up. And he wakes up and he's full of peace. Surroundings did not affect him. Circumstances did not affect him. Situations did not affect him. Problems did not affect him. He looked at the situation. He knew that he was peace. And he just said, be still. That's it. And everything stopped. Why? Because he believed what he is. He believed what is inside of him. He believed that the Father is in him. And he believed that he is the one that affects situations, not situations affect him. He believed that he was the light and these winds and these storms were darkness and that they have to flee the second he acknowledges what's going on. That's how Jesus walked. And as he is, so are we in this world. We are able to do the same thing. To be in constant peace. And that's a big one because most people's problems start when we start losing peace. When fear starts coming in, anxiety starts coming in, worry starts coming in, we start panicking and bad stuff starts happening. Our body starts shutting down, our body starts malfunctioning, and we have to run to the emergency room. Like nothing good ever happens of that. And we can stop it with one scripture. Peace in me. The second you sense something or you see something in your life that is not, that does not line up with peace, you say in Jesus' name, no, peace in me. And start praising him and thanking him for what's in you. And you will start seeing and start commanding those circumstances and everything has to obey what you say, just like it obey Jesus, because as he is, so are you in this world, and everything has to line up with the truth of the Word of God. Amen. I know it sounds like it's really radical, but the only reason why it sounds radical is because we just don't see it that way. We just don't, you know, like it's, it has never been presented to us that way. But that's how it is. That's how it's supposed to be. And the more that we talk about it, the more that we renew our mind to it, the more it becomes the norm, it becomes our lifestyle, and then all of a sudden everything else is going to be different. You're going to walk around and somebody's going to start panicking and you're like, what are you doing? What's wrong with you? Why? Because now you are going to be that peace and you're going to see that everything else that doesn't have to do with peace is of the devil. And you can fix it by being there, by being that light and shining light over that darkness, over that situation. And then he also said, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. So this also applies to all of us. So Jesus is sending us out. What that means is, just like Father equipped him and sent him out, into this world to accomplish everything that he needed to accomplish and to be victorious every single time, did Jesus ever have a loss on this earth? No. He had 100% victory. He was the one that agreed to, the go, to go to the cross. If he didn't want to do that, the devil, would, devil couldn't even do that. He agreed to do this for us. But besides that, in everything else, he had 100% victory. So repeat after me. As he is, As he is so, I am, so I am, in this world, in, this world, in, my, daily life, in my daily life, Jesus had 100% success. Jesus had 100 I expect 100% success over the works of the enemy in my life. And I will not settle for anything else. Amen? Amen. Okay. You guys committed to something really cool. This is really exciting. But that's how we have to see it. Like if we don't start talking about it, if we don't start talking about seeing ourselves as Jesus, 
walking out on this earth, seeing 100% results, we can never achieve them. Now, I understand that we're practically, we're not there yet. I understand that. But in order for you to even head that direction, you have to see that as your end result. You have to see that as your goal. If you don't see it in your future, or if you don't even see that as your destination, you will, that's, I guarantee you will never get there. If you decide that some failure is okay, then you will never reach 100% results. And so we don't want failure to stop us, but we don't want to settle on it. If you lose, get up, shake it off, keep moving forward. You do it again, you keep pounding again, you keep going forward again. You get tripped up, lose again, get up and keep going forward. Just don't settle for a loss. Don't stop there, that's the key. Don't stop in a location or a place where you lost. We're in the war. We might lose some battles, but don't let one battle define your war. Because if you lose a battle, you can decide that I'm, I'm done, I lost, and stay there. And that's what happens to so many Christians. Something happens, the enemy attacks, and they quit. They walk away from God, and they just give up. What that means is they allow one battle to define who they are. And that's not who we are. Our goal is to win the war. And as we keep moving forward, we're going to continue winning more and more battles. And we're going to expect to win more battles. And we're going to walk around and say, I'm light, I'm glory, I'm resurrection power, I'm life. And just keep repeating that and just keep repeating that and keep repeating that. David would have never beat Goliath if in his head, while he was doing, you know, playing with the sheep, chasing bears around, if he didn't prepare himself for it. There is no way he could have just woke up one day out of nowhere, showed up and say, I'm going to be Goliath. That's not how that works. You prepare yourself. You train yourself. You press yourself. You get in this word. Because what he said was, if God was with me, with the lion, with the bear, who do you think you are, Goliath? You're just another obstacle in my way and I'll kill you like I killed the other ones. I'm not talking about killing people, I'm talking about the works of the devil. For us, it's, you know, we, we love people, we don't kill anybody. We heal them and we raise them from the dead. But I'm referring to as obstacle. David saw Goliath as another obstacle. He saw him as another lion, as another bear, as another evil thing that was in his way of where he was going. Because he saw himself victorious. But if we look at David's life, if we look at Psalms, that boy was full of proclamations. All he did is just proclaim how good God is and how good he is in God. I mean, he had that thing figured out before Jesus even came. He just spoke how good God is. Instead, the Christians keep talking about how bad God is. Oh, God's teaching me. God's allowing him. God's doing this. God's killing these people. God's doing this. And all is just junk and junk and junk about God. And then when you need God, you're not going to believe. Even if you say all this garbage about him, when you need him, he still wants to help you. Why? Because he is that good. He loves you that much. But it's not going to be him that won't do what he's supposed to do. It's you will not accept it. Because you already believe that he's a horrible being. And so we have to stop blaming God for all of these things that he doesn't have anything to do with. Remember that God is light and in him is no darkness. That's it. It's that simple. And so if there is no darkness in God... There's no darkness in Jesus. There's no darkness in you. It all just trickles down. It all comes back to you. Whatever is in God, whatever is in Jesus is in you. Because you are one. And you are not allowed to separate yourself. Once you become a child of God, you tie yourself up and you cannot untie yourself out of it. You can walk away and you can choose with your will. 
But just because you're walking in your daily life and there is some problem does not mean that God entangled you and tossed you out because you messed up. God's never going to do that. Amen? Amen? God is always with you. And so He has sent us. And so that means that God has equipped us with everything that we need to be victorious 100% of the time when we live on this earth. And so to be able to practically do that, we have to start studying the, the life of Jesus Christ. We have to start studying, start going through the gospel, start figuring out how he lived. Most Christians, they know of Jesus, but they don't know Jesus. They don't have a relationship with him. The only way to know him is you start reading about him. And you start asking the Holy Spirit to re reveal to you more and more how he walked, how he succeeded, how he was able to do everything that he did. And as we start learning that, and then we believe that as he is serving this world, we just start copying him. Just like our children, they copy adults. You know, for the most part, they don't learn anything new. They just see what their parents do and they start copying the same stuff. Our father is God. We're supposed to see how he behaved and start copying him, start imitating him. Just start doing what Jesus did. Whether or not we understand it or not, just start copying it and we're going to start seeing how powerful that is. Because our life will start getting transformed. Okay, so let's go to Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2 it says the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light and Isaiah is talking about Jesus those who dwelled in the land of shadow of death upon them a light has shined so Isaiah was prophesying that when Jesus came the darkness occupied the earth like it, it was a pretty bad time in that history that time of history and so Jesus came in as light and he shined over the shadow of darkness his light shined and so the way that applies to us is that a lot of people a lot of Christians when they see things going bad they like to run like I'll hear a lot of Christians say like oh man like things the society's falling apart I gotta run to a place where everybody's Christian you're running away from the darkness that is the wrong thing of what Jesus did. He came into the darkness to be the light. Where there is more darkness, there is more opportunities for the light to shine. If you show up to, um, what's a, you know, really bright, let's say Arizona, where it's really bright, right? The sun is shining. If you show up there with a flashlight and try to shine, like, hey guys, anybody need any light? <laughs> Nobody's going to see you as that light. If you show up to Alaska in the middle of winter time, even if you have a little five lumen LED light, you're going to walk around and everybody's going to see you. Why? Because there's darkness. Where there's darkness, you, the light has the opportunity to shine. And so don't run away from darkness. Go into the darkness and shine as the light as Jesus Christ. Because that's exactly what Jesus did. So now let's go to Matthew 4, 16 through 17. And so I'm just going to go through like scripture by scripture just to show you that I'm not making this up. It's, it's written in here. I didn't invent this stuff. All I'm doing is just reading what the Bible says and telling you that you are the same. If Jesus was light, you are light, and you can do the same thing. So Matthew chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. It said, The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And upon those who sat in the region in shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, 
for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so we see here that light has arrived. When Jesus came, light has arrived. And so what that means is if you are light, you have the kingdom of God in you. Why? Because Jesus said, or the scripture talks about Jesus, and Jesus said that the kingdom of God is at hand. It's in your hand. So how does that practically apply to us? As you're walking around, your light, you see any darkness, you have the kingdom of God in you, you're an ambassador of Christ, you can establish the works of the kingdom of God where you're at. You can put out the darkness anywhere you go because it's at your hand. And that's what we always talk about. When we pray for healing, we lay hands. We always, when we pray in tongues, we practice to where you renew your mind to where your trigger to where your spirit is always flowing and you feel it at your fingertips. If you can feel the life of God at your fingertips, you know that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's what it literally means. Everywhere Jesus went, he saw darkness, he would just, he, he just did this. Be healed, get up, wake up. Uh, everything, any problem there was, he was able to fix it. Why? Because he had the kingdom of heaven at hand. And as he walked around and he saw something that did not look like it was supposed to be in heaven, he fixed it. Because the Bible says, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. So he knew how the kingdom of heaven is supposed to look, and he knew how the kingdom of darkness looked, and he saw the difference, and the second he saw something that did not look right, he went and fixed it. He didn't go around asking God, do you want me to do this person? Should I be doing this person? Should I be helping this person? He just went around doing good things because the kingdom of heaven was at his hand and he set the captives free. That's how we're supposed to look at. Because many times religious people will tell us like, well, you know, like, are you sure you're supposed to pray for that person? What if that person's in sin? Maybe you need to get him set free. Maybe you need to get him out of sin first. No, we bring light. We bring the kingdom of heaven into that situation. And when that person sees light, they're not going to want to stay in that darkness. We have to be able to carry the kingdom of heaven at hand. Way too many churches settle that they think that they're going to feed somebody some soup and that's going to change the person. You have to bring the kingdom of heaven. You have to give him God's works and that is heal the sick, raise the dead. You have to bring him something that Jesus brought. Everybody can do the soup. God doesn't get glorified in that. Why? Because if an unbeliever is doing it, Jesus said, depart from me, I never knew you. God gets glorified when his works are done by his people and his works are kingdoms, life, light, life, glory, resurrection power. If there is oppression, it leaves. If there is fear, it leaves. If there is worry, it leaves. If there is cancer, it goes. If there is some kind of sickness, it goes. Why? Because the kingdom of heaven is in our fingertips. That's how we're supposed to walk around. We train ourselves when we come here to learn that the kingdom of heaven is in our, at our fingertips. And as we walk around in our daily life, we have the ability to affect this world. We have the ability to affect people around us. And if we walk like that, then God gets the glory. God gets praises. He gets glorified. That's what we love doing the uh, testimonies. When we do these testimonies, we're glorifying Jesus. We're glorifying his works. We're glorifying what he did because he's the one doing it through us. Even though we're physically laying hands, we're doing all this stuff, but he's the one that's actually doing it through us. So when we speak about it, or we share it with other people, we see how he gets glorified and people get encouraged. And then when they hear that God did that in somebody else's life, he can do it in our life and it just continues to spread and it becomes a culture and it becomes a lifestyle.
What we want is we want this kingdom lifestyle to be in every person's life so we can start affecting more and more people. That that should be the norm, that should be the standard. It should never be the standard where somebody gets sick and dies and we send them condolences. Sorry, that's not what Jesus paid for. He doesn't sit there in heaven and like hits likes, you know, when somebody does that. He's probably not very excited about that. He's like, man, I give him my life and that's all they do. Just, you know, I, I wouldn't be happy. So Jesus gave us the power and authority and ability over all works of the devil. And we can accomplish all of that. All right, so let's go to John chapter 3. John 3, verses 19 through 21. And it says, And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, and his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. So there is this separation. So there are some people that are evil and love the darkness. So people that are not saved, people that are evil, whose father is the devil, they're drawn to darkness. That's where they feel comfortable. So they're not drawn to light unless light will shine into there. That's why Jesus had to come into that darkness. They're not going to automatically come out of that darkness. The light has to go there and shine. And then those people can see the light and allow it to work in their life. But people that, that walk by the truth and are drawn to the light, it's visible that the works that they're doing are works in God. So there's a clear separation. People that are in the light do works of God. People that are in the darkness, people that are evil do evil things. They're part of the kingdom of darkness. And so there's a separation between the two kingdoms. Society is trying to combine them. Society is trying to get them to where everything's confused and everything's messed up, to where nobody knows where there's light, where there's darkness. But God wants to make it very clear there is either light or darkness. There is nothing in between. So let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Second Corinthians chapter two, verses fourteen through sixteen. And it says, Now thanks be to God who always leads us to triumph in Christ, and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ, among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To the one we are aroma of death, leading to death, and to the one, to the other we are aroma of life, leading to life. And he who is sufficient for these things. So we see that when we start being the light, and as light, there are some people that are practicing evil, they will hate you. Like we see that there are people during Jesus' time, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, they hated Jesus. Why? Because he was exposing their darkness 
And they chose to stay in the darkness. They didn't want to get out of darkness. And so to them, he, they hated him. He was the aroma of death. But to people that received him as light, he was the aroma of life. And so same thing will happen to us. It's okay to where you, if, you, if you testify or you share something or you try to be nice to somebody or you try to pray for somebody and they reject you. Don't be discouraged with that. Your job is just to plant that seed and allow the Word of God to do your job, but not every person is going to accept you. So you do your job and you move on to the next person. And don't, you know, don't let, don't get stuck in that situation. But the light in us can still put out the darkness in people. And so a lot of times we'll come across situations where we'll talk to the person and they'll say like, no, I don't want you to pray for me or I don't want you to do anything. But inside of you, if you understand that you are light, even if you can just shake their hand, you can still set them free of that darkness. Now, if they choose to go back to the darkness, it will come back upon them. But if they see something or they experience, so like at that moment, like maybe they don't still understand stuff or they're not ready to accept it. But if you just shake their hand or even pray for them without touching them, like inside of yourself, you can still set them free. You can still get them healed. You can still do all of those things by your faith. And that will still shine your light, even if they choose to stay in darkness. But they will experience the light of God by your presence and by what you're doing. So now let's go to John 8, 12. And it says, And Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. So what Jesus is saying is that if you're going to be following him, you will not have darkness. You will not walk in darkness. You cannot be following Jesus and have darkness and following darkness at the same time. If you choose to follow him, if you choose to concentrate on him, the darkness will start falling off. It will not be able to stay present. Why? Because we discussed earlier that light is way stronger than darkness. And so if your focus is on Jesus, that darkness will start fleeing. It has no choice. It cannot stay there. So over a period of time, if you're still seeing darkness in your life, what that means is you're concentrating on the darkness instead of the light. And so we have to shift our understanding, shift and start seeing that light instead of the darkness. Stop concentrating on the darkness. Concentrate on the light. Concentrate on Jesus. Renew your mind to that. And the darkness will start dissipating and fading out and going away. That's what Jesus said. I'll read it again. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. This is what Jesus promises. Like if there is somebody that can deliver on their promises, that's Jesus, right? And he says that if you follow me, you will not have any darkness. If you concentrate on me, you will not have any darkness. Like he guarantees that you will have light. So that means we just need to follow him and concentrate on him. And he guarantees that we will not have darkness in us if we follow through with that. And we discussed that darkness is anything of the devil. We need the revelation of Jesus Christ. We need to understand that truth. And the truth is that you are in Christ. And we follow Christ, we concentrate on Christ, we speak about Christ, we proclaim Christ, we look at His life, we imitate Him, and if we're doing that, there is no place for darkness. He guarantees it. 
Because a lot of people say like, well, what if I'm going to continue? What if I'm going to be a Christian and then I'm still going to be struggling with all those things? It is not possible. And we just, I just biblically proved it to you. Like if you follow Jesus, you will not have darkness. You will be all light because that's what he is. Now, like I said, for some people, it takes a little bit of time as you renew in your mind, as you're seeing and concentrating on Jesus. But with very short time, if you fully go into it, if you fully immerse and renew in your mind to the image of Christ, all darkness will flee. You will have no darkness in you. You will just, it cannot be there. It's not possible. And Jesus guarantees it. So... I know I'm going through a lot of scriptures, but I just want to just lay it out scripture by scripture by scripture. Because I don't want it to be something that is what I'm saying or something, you know, that, that we're trying to fool you into something. If we go scripture by scripture, there is nobody can argue this. Right? I mean, I just read what the scripture says and then that's it. And then I prove it by another scripture, another scripture, and there's nobody can have an argument. And so if somebody thinks that they have an argument about it, they just have not read these scriptures. If you read these scriptures, and that's why I want everybody to follow, go home, look in them, repeat them, just really dive into and ask the Holy Spirit just to, to really uh, get it in you. And, and that's it. Like the devil has nothing. So John 12, 35, 36. Then Jesus said to them, a little while longer, the light is with you. And again, so Jesus was referring to himself as the light. So he was telling the apostle, apostles, just for a little longer, I'm with you. The light, Jesus. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, Believe in the light that you may become sons of light. And so this is another thing that he talks about. So Jesus told the apostles. Because before he came, they did not know what light is. They did not have the written word back then. They did not have the New Testament. It was not written yet. So they did not know of the light. They knew that the light was coming. If they let, read the prophets, if they read Isaiah, like we read, that the light was coming. But now he said, the light is with you. Jesus is with you. So walk in the light and concentrate on the light. Because if you don't, if you take your focus off of the light, if you take your focus off of Jesus, then the light will overtake you. So it talks again here that we have to concentrate as believers on the light, not on darkness. And if we concentrate on the light, we walk in the light, we walk with the light, the darkness leaves, and we become the sons of light. Everything is light, light, light. Everything is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Like, it cannot be around Him. So that's why I don't understand how a lot of these religions think that they're going to get to God or have any kind of life without Jesus. It's not possible. Everything is through Him. Everything's by Him. And if we don't have that revelation of Him, it can never work for us. If we don't know who the light is, it cannot work for us. We'll just be another religion. And that's not what we should be. We should be the light and the sons of light. And that's what Jesus was telling the apostles. And he said that if you walk with light, concentrate on the light, the darkness will not overtake you and you are becoming the sons of light. That's how awesome it is. So I know that when we read a lot of scripture, people get bored. So let's stand up. Repeat after me. Jesus is light. Jesus is light. I am walking with light. I am walking with light. I'm learning from light. I'm learning from light. Light is in me. Light is in me. Light abides in me. Light abides in me. Light is life. Light is life. 
is the glory. Is the glory. Is the resurrection power. Is the resurrection power. It abides in me. It abides in me. I have light. I have light. I shine to this world. I shine to this world. And I am a son of light. I am a son of light. Darkness has nothing on me. Darkness has nothing on me. Ever. Ever. Darkness flees. Darkness flees. When I arrive. When I arrive. Because I'm a son of light. Because I'm a son of light. Amen. 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 All right. Everybody wake up? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> sit back down again. <laughs> I know you guys want to practice the principle that you want to sleep on it. You know, it's so good that you want to sleep on it. Get a deeper revelation. But we'll do that. You can go home and take a nap when we get released. So, but I think I'm going to... Yeah, there's no way I'm going to wrap it up this portion of today. So, we're going to stop on that, on this scripture. And so I just kind of quickly want to recap, because I know I read a lot of scripture, and for those of you that followed, everybody agrees, right, what the Bible says, like it's, it's, it's what the Bible says, like I'm just telling you what it says, and we got you to agree before that it's the truth, so if it's the truth, you don't have a choice but not to believe it. So, to simplify it, is this. There's darkness in this world and everything of the devil is darkness. Sickness, disease, cancer, fear, oppression, depression, you name it. Anything that has a medical term is darkness. Or anything that has any kind of psychological term, any kind of phobia, zobia, whatever. There is like a whole, you know, uh, library on this garbage. There's lots of darkness. And the devil just keeps adding more and more. And people just creating and giving it more names. But to sum it up, it goes back to one thing, and it's darkness. So regardless of what it is, what the, what the term is, what the word is, if it's not of God, if it does not bring life and life abundant, it's death and it's darkness. Is that pretty simple? I just want to make it like really simplified so we never have to wonder and try to look up for scripture for everything. Okay, is, uh, is uh, darkophobia, you know, that exists, like it's not like, okay, what's the scripture in that one? Um, it's darkness, right? And the Bible says that Jesus came into this world and he was the light. He came to shine into the darkness. Not only that, he said that he came to give that light to people that believe in him. And so if we're, believe, if we're believers, if we're sons of light, what that means is that same light, that same power, that same life, same glory, same resurrection power that abided in Jesus when he walked this earth also abides in us. And because all of that is in us, as we renew our mind to this truth and start believing it and start walking it out, we are able to do the same things that Jesus did. And we just need to see it as two forces, darkness, light. We are light. When we come in the presence of darkness, it flees. And, that, and that's it. You don't need any kind of algebra formulas, geometry, you don't need to figure out, you know, like um, what kind of fast you need to take, how many, you know, years you're going to fast or do all that stuff. None of that. All formulas, gone. You are light. When you come into contact with darkness, it has to flee, period. That's it. That's going to be the new formula. Light hits darkness, darkness, gone. I know it's not mathematical, but <laughs> not geometry or algebra, but that's, that's what it basically comes down to. And we have to start in our daily walk, start seeing us and doing whatever it is, however it is you're gonna renew your mind, but practically start 
triggering your mind to see yourself constantly. I'm light, I'm light, I'm light, I'm light, I'm life, I'm glory, I'm resurrection power, um, Jesus is in me, because he's in me, I have all of these things, and because I have all these things, sickness cannot be in me, I have divine health, I'm righteous, when God looks at me, I'm always perfect, uh, he's, he's always smiling at me, he's never angry at me, and just keep just bombarding yourself non-stop. If you just keep doing that, going around your daily life, when you have a minute, by saying those things, that light is going to be glowing so hard, that the darkness won't even come, you know, miles near you. That's how simple it is. That's what Jesus provided. And we have the ability to walk in that. And it's really good news. It's really exciting. We just have to practice and allow it to manifest in us. Amen? Amen. All right.